Hello, everybody. This is Kate Strashne from Dedicated. We are reporting live from Gartner's Data and Analytics Summit. I'm here with T. Scott Clendenio from Gartner. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm really happy to be here. Are you enjoying this weather? The weather is amazing. We're Sunshine, here. gentle breezes. That's gentle awesome. breezes, palm trees. Palm Look at trees. this. This I is mean, gorgeous. You know, hey. Plus analytics. Exactly. Who could ask for anything more? I agree. Data and analytics and now Both. AI. And now AI. Yes. And this is exactly what I want to talk to you about today, Scott. You know, companies are really excited about the potential of AI, but there's still this need to focus on the data science, the analytics, the nitty gritty. Talk to us about that. Why is that still important? Absolutely. Even if you are all in on artificial intelligence, the data preparation has to be in place because it's sort of the foundation of the building that you're going to put everything upon. So if you don't have the data straight, you're in trouble even with AI. But AI now sort of includes most of the analytics practices that you and I have been talking about for decades. So you really need to get the basics in place. So what happens if you don't get those basics in place? You spend an enormous amount of money, you get very little return, and then you end up in big trouble. Not a good triad. Yes, and I, I think we don't really have to convince people that there is business value in doing the data analytics right and leveraging AI. Why do you think we're not quite there yet when it comes to adoption? I think there are a couple reasons. One of them has to do with even the, the basic vocabulary that we use tends to be very exclusive or excluding of other people. So we talk about data literacy. Well, that means that if you don't have that, you're illiterate. So that really isn't the message we want to convey to our fellow workers, stakeholders to be involved. If you talk about data driven, think about the associations with that driven over the edge, driven to distraction. People want to drive. They don't want to be driven. Mm. So even on a fundamental level, there seems to be this, we are in data anal and analytics and you are not. Mm. And therefore, that's very exclusionary. That's not where we want to be. We want everybody involved. So besides the, I guess, what we call it, are, are there any actual tech complications? Are the tools difficult to use at this stage? They have gotten so much better. Um, I think that low code, no code for many of the projects we're doing now, unless they need enormous scaling, is a fantastic way, especially as sort of a gateway into the field so that people can sort of learn the basics with a tool that isn't impossible to manipulate. So tools can be a barrier, but they don't have to be. Mm -hmm. And I also want to get your thoughts on sort of what's happening over the next two or three years. What are some of your predictions for this space? I think that there is going to be a huge shift. Last year, it was all towards large language models. Then it was towards small language models. Now it's sort of the rise of agentic mm -hmm. AI. So I think one of the things organizations need to do over the next two to three years is just prepare to be nimble, as opposed to saying, this is the technology, this is the plan, this is the final answer, to create a system so they can adopt and adapt to everything that's going on. So we went from large language models to small language models, and now agents, is there something that's going to happen after? I'm going to be excited to see what happens after. I think it is the biggest concern I have is that there is going to be a reconciliation because a lot of companies have spent an enormous amount of money on Gen AI and they're not seeing the returns. Yeah. So unless we in data and analytics start providing that value soon, there's going to be a huge crash and that scares me. Yeah. Okay. Well, we don't want you to be scared. So hopefully no, never, we'll, never. we'll see that. Uh, last question for you. Sure. What is your favorite part about the Gartner Data and Analytics Summit? I think it's the fact that you get to see so many different people from so many different organizations all around the world. We get to meet with clients and prospects and coworkers and great people like yourself. So it's a fantastic way to just interact with our peers. I agree. Ever since I landed in Orlando, actually, even on my flight, I saw people that I knew and like, hey, we're going to Gartner. It's like That's the big fantastic. data party. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Scott, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. And everyone, make sure you're following Gartner on all social media.